Dude, I don't have any answers. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually quite serious because you know I just think I really like it and good. It's that's great. To talk about music, but you no, know, it's the same. I don't have a set list when I'm on stage, so we're the same way then. Yeah, I have to deliver something though to <laughs> <laughs> the TV station. So I I did do some some research, research maybe to you know come up with some ideas for questions, and I was really mm. surprised that nobody in this round. 2012 ever talked to you about how damn sexy your music is. Mm. <laughs> I was surprised it, to find that. Sometimes I hear people say that, yeah, I, I, know, I never know what to, uh, what to think. It's a, a tough word to, to know how to accomplish. Maybe in dance music it might be, it goes along with it, you know. But I guess uh, in more of the realms of music I do, maybe it has to, goes more towards the personality of the 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 voice that's telling you the story rather than uh, the rhythm of it. Yeah. I don't know. Tough question. You're not aware of that? I don't know. I, I hear people say it once in a while. It's not something I've tried to accomplish you know, on purpose. I wouldn't even know how to go about it. I guess that sort of thing maybe has to happen by accident. I'm not sure. That's funny. <laughs> To me, yeah, because yeah. you know all the all the, the words that come to my mind when I listen to your music, mm. they 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 go for you know music, you know like desperation, urge, holding back, you know fight, lust, all these things. Yeah, I think yeah. they're all can be found in your music and yeah. very sexy in the same. I guess all those extremes of of relationships and and problems and emotions that are sort of sexy at times. You know the extremeness of that can be appealing and attractive. It's so blatant. The subtleties are hard to. Uh, when songs are subtle, it's it's harder to notice them as much, you know. So maybe you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, love interruption. I mean, that's that's another example, you know, mm. that could be the international anthem of all masochists in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you didn't mean it that way, did you? <laughs> That would be nice. I would love them to adopt that as their anthem. That'd be great. <laughs> it's just sort of about uh, the idea of you know love getting in the way of itself. You know, if you uh, really want to think about love, you have to think about all sides of it. It's not as simple as you know, boy meets girl or boy loves his mother or whatever it is. It's all the intricacies of how people relate to each other and how sometimes we sabotage each other. We sabotage ourselves. You know. We hurt ourselves to get something better. Uh, what do we all want love for in the first place? You know, if we want love so much, like everybody does, why do we do the things that we do to hurt one another so much? It's very interesting. It's hard to talk about love and music as well. It's been talked about so much in every song that's been written since the dawn of time. You know, it's the most popular topic. So, if you're going to actually mention the word love, you sort of have to have an, your own. Take of it, take on it, I guess. So have you come up with an answer to the question you just asked? I, it sort of that song answers it for me. It sort of answers it for me. It sort of explains to myself. People that are hurting you, there's love behind it. You know, there's love of something behind it, themselves or you, or they don't know how to express it to you. It's unrequited love, whatever it is. Anytime you're hurt, there's love di directly behind it. I think is the answer mm -hmm. from myself. I don't know about for other people. But again, they're not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I wasn't. laughs> okay. And uh, one other thing that is really, for me, very apparent in, in almost all the songs you do is, is this urge. You know, it's like it has to come out right now mm. in this, you know, millisecond. Yeah. And yeah. it's very intense, you know, everything you do. Where do you think this intensity comes from? Um, you know, you, you, I, you know, I work in a framework of about, you know, whatever it is, two and a half, three minutes to get my point across, you know. Sometimes artists have a canvas that, you know, lasts, you know, 30 feet across and it can hang in a giant museum somewhere. You know, I have this time frame that to really get my points across, I have not much time to waste, you know. You learn that early on, especially the White Stripes, you know, we had only two people. Uh, it, it, it was a lot of learning for me to say, I have to get my point across like this and like this and like this, you know, I don't have people to help me, you know, a full band to help me, 
you know, I'm not, I'm writing my own songs, not somebody else writing them for me, you know, so I, I have to figure out how to do this quickly and, and get my point across it, sometimes very simplistically. You know. It's good, it's good, it was good training for me as a songwriter to be in a two-piece band like the White Stripes for so long and as a performer, because I never had a safety net, you know, I didn't have other people to, to rely on and we didn't have a set list and we were playing unpopular music and, uh, also, how it all related to the blues. All these things were great training for me as a songwriter. Why blues? That's actually my next question. Of all the music you've, you've grown up around in, in Detroit, probably, you know, why, yeah. why did the blues leave such a lasting and deep impression on you, and why did it? At some point, it clicked for me that uh, all the music I loved was the blues. Everything. It didn't matter what the style was, if it had a punk style or a country style or whatever. It was all blues. It was all this form of telling stories. And... Um, It's like a way in saying like all paintings are oil based that I, that you like you know uh, they have different styles different expressionist cubists and whatever but you're all using oils you know so I think like all of us in you know American culture for the last hundred years are really using the blues you know this is our format it's the perfect you know uh, culmination of music's history it all came together in its most simplistic form it's it's, it's presented to you people it's almost like a 35 millimeter a frame or a, a something perfect that uh, that can last forever. I think the blues, that invention of this style, are, cannot be beat. It can't be touched and it can't be resisted as a song. You can't resist it. It's just too perfect. It's the perfect framework for the stories you want to tell. But being your age and growing up where you've grown up, you know, it wasn't the the most obvious uh, right yeah, option. Right. <laughs> Well, uh, the kids who liked hip-hop when I was growing up, they didn't, they didn't know it was the blues. I didn't know it was the blues. You know, it took me until I was like 20-something years old before I realized, wow, that's exactly what these rappers are saying is exactly what Blind Willie McTell said. It was exactly what Blind Lemon Jefferson was saying. These are the same stories of struggle and pain and love and violence that uh, we've been hearing for a long time. So once you let your brain understand that and click into that, it opens up a whole range of possibilities of what the blues can be and then you just can't help but fall in love with it like you can't help but fall in love with all aspects of the blues i think if you love music enough and you dig deep enough it, that's where you that's where you're headed is the blues why is struggle so important you know when i was younger and i took some classes in high school i thought and i started talking about stories or breaking down stories in the english class or something and uh literature like Well, there's a protagonist and there's an antagonist. And I, I remember I first heard a teacher said that. I'm like, what do you mean there's a protagonist and an antagonist? I didn't realize that. What do you mean? A story has to have a protagonist and an antagonist. I'm like, I always kind of thought there was hundreds of different kinds of stories. But in essence, really, there isn't. You know, there is just about struggle. If you don't have a problem, there is no story. Every story has to have a problem. And uh, that really opened my eyes, you know. And that, that goes on to songwriting from there poetry and, and the way you express things that there has to be a struggle. I take it all the way to stage performing too. You know, I make struggles for myself. I, I purposely make, play guitars that are out of tune, that things are too far away from me on stage that I can't reach. I do that all the time because I want to create struggle. I want anyone in the crowd to witness not everything going easy for me. People handing me beautiful in tune guitars and everything's nice and the lighting's perfect. It's too easy, you know, it's too easy, and there's no struggle there and no story, so um, I'd rather see them watch me overcome some problem. People always say, oh no, your guitar went out, or you can't, your guitar become unplugged or something, there was a technical problem, and I'm like, that's great, that's a great thing, I don't know why, don't be worried about that, like, that's, I wish we had ten more of those uh, during the show. Yeah. So what would happen if everything was perfect and would all be boring? I guess so, yeah. Well, it's just a little bit easy. I think people say, oh, if somebody's a perfectionist, you know, they want they try to get everything perfect, and well, that, would, that would be boring. I mean, perfectionism would be so boring. And it would be wrong. It would be incorrect. I mean, like, we're, we're filming right now. You know, if you spent, you know, nine hours setting up the lighting in this room to be perfect, it probably wouldn't be any better than it is right now for what we're trying to accomplish, you know. But um, that's, that's where you have to decide as an artist when to stop, you know, when to stop painting. You can keep painting and painting and painting over and over again. You can paint on the same canvas for 20 years if you want uh, and not stop. You have to know when it's over with, when it's time to 
it's good enough. That's not being perfect. You know? yeah, it's funny because we did an interview with a media colleague of mine 10 years ago, which I just watched again, and where you said, you know, it's a, a good song is a good song, no matter mm. what take, you know, you, you, you record it or you, you play it. You yeah. Know? And it doesn't, and the bad song doesn't get better if you, you know, overdub it. And da -da -da. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the same, yeah. the same thing. Um, 